then as soon, then I started singing the chorus and it felt so good. So then I called Phil, our fifth member, and Max Martin and said, I think we've got a song to give to BTS. And they said, why don't we hold on to it and give it to BTS? <laughs> <laughs> This is a special song, dude. Thanks, Zane. I'd love to know a little bit about it, Chris, and how you and these this all-conquering, wonderful group of individuals called BTS came to be part of the music of the spheres, and uh, the whole thing became my universe. Well, it's a love song. Yes. That came from a loving text. It had been in my mind for a while that someone had said, BTS, we're wondering if we do a song for them or something, something like that. And um, the phrase, my universe, in this text was like, oh, that's a cool song title. And um, so, so occasionally uh, I ask producers we're working with if they have any like spare loops they don't know what to do with. And that's often how our pop songs come about. It happened with a song called Something Just Like This and a song, another one. Um, and uh, anyway... Bill, who we work with a lot, this guy called Bill Rocco. I said, do you ever make tracks? And he'd made this loop, this track with a bit of vocals on it. And I said, oh, please, can I take that away? And I was, I'm not a great driver, but I was driving around. And uh, then the chorus of my universe just landed. Love that. So straight back to the studio. I said, okay, let's put this down now. This is all in the same day. You did a U-turn, literally did a U-turn. Then, then I started singing the chorus and it felt so good. So then I called Phil, our fifth member, and Max Martin and said, I think we've got a song to give to BTS. And they said, why don't we hold on to it and give it to BTS? And, <laughs> and then we started communicating with BTS and then went to Korea. And then uh, the concept of it's a song about love that's difficult or it's forbidden or you can't quite get it together. So it felt like really cool to have two bands that it's a difficult love story, but it works in the end. It really does. And I, and I love them and we love them. And it's been such a joy. It's something you could look at so cynically and we have at times, but anytime there's actual communication or, or music between us, it just feels so good. <laughs> and so I, I unabashedly and unashamedly feel really grateful for the song, grateful for the person that inspired the song and grateful for the people we sing it with. I love that you went to Korea to have the experience. So much of the way music gets made now through convenience and just through schedule and, and no judgment one way or the other gets done via the magic of file sharing. And I think it's not the Coldplay way. I know you love the tactility of being in the room and having that experience when you're working with people. If you can, you will. So how was that trip to Korea? The trip was, I don't know if you know the film Back to the Future where... Uh, I think that's given out of birth, Chris. But there's, a, there's an outfit that Doc Brown wears that's like a sort of nuclear hazmat suit yes and going to korea was like hanging out with ten thousand people dressed <laughs> like that yeah. and we had to go through i think 13 checkpoints and it was and tests and it was so difficult to get in <laughs> and i was like i have no idea where i am i don't understand anything anyone's saying to me but somehow i have faith that we're going to see bts tomorrow and it happened being in the room with those guys and i love them as well and have gotten to know them incrementally over from one conversation to another where I think we're at a point where we, we sort of understand each other better than we ever have. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm enjoying that process. I'm enjoying the, the, the gentle kind of familiarity I'm getting out of that rather than this forced thing. They, they really are very tight and they work in their own way. So my question, Chris, is seeing them in their own natural environment, not on the stage at the Billboard Awards or somewhere else, like you come to us, you went to them. What did you What did you take from that experience, being in the creative space with them? Well, of course, the, the K-pop system is very different to what we're used to. You could say, oh, everyone's just manufactured and all this. But within that, there's a real bandiness to them. You know, they're really, as far as I could tell, really friends, you know, yeah. really in it together. And I think people, with any great boy band, if you want to call it a boy band or girl band, like the Spice Girls or... Coldplay. Like Coldplay. Uh, there's just something beyond the being put togetherness. There's a natural chemistry, and yeah, and and they're just people that I like. Yeah, yeah, me too. 
The album is uh, is now officially named. It's called Music of the Spheres. It comes with it um, a, a universe pun very much intended. Um, a, you know, a world of of, of um, uncovering new emotions and feelings and languages and all kinds of things that we're going to get to know through this music. Um, for you and your friends in the band uh, to to be able to to go beyond our earthly environments, how sort of much fun has it been to to look beyond what we inherently know as a species and start to think about what life might be like with other life forms, other languages, and really be able to lean into that on a creative space? Well, it's very liberating. But the truth of it is, Zane, that really it's just a bunch of love songs <laughs> cleverly disguised and, well, not that cleverly disguised, actually. There's a freedom to say when you set something in another place, there's a freedom to say what you really feel. So there's a lot of love in there and uh, also some confusion about someone like me who, you know, has a way to go in terms of understanding love and uh, everything. And, and then also like, not just romantic love, but love for your fellow humans and yeah. how do you handle people you don't love and, regimes you might not like and so so in this in a strange way there's it's set in aliens but it's really about here you are remain a dedicated uh example of our species you're doing global citizen this weekend you continue to find ways through your own journey as you eloquently put it and learnings you have to go through to try and find ways to contribute and and be available and 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 I and I wonder, and maybe this is a placeholder for a, for a deeper conversation later, how challenging that balance is sometimes between what you give versus what you hold back for yourself. I have a way to go in my heart and my, you know, how I live my own life. Um, I think doing things like Global Citizen is just better than not doing them. I don't know if it's ideal or if it's the best model of trying to use your voice and encourage everybody to use their voice, you know, but it's one thing that becomes apparent when you tour around the world is that no one's really in charge. So mm. everybody's voice is important. Everyone has an equal right to be here. And I like working with Global Citizen because it's the organization that really encourages individual voices. It's not, it isn't about pop stars telling you what to think. I think for one reason and another, some weeks I, I'm questioning my own worth and validity. So, of course, on a bigger picture, that makes even less sense. But mm. like I said, I feel like it's better to show up than not show up. Well, that's one of the things I love about Coldplay and about your songwriting is that you put those vulnerabilities out there. And in doing so, we feel less alone. It's the great trade. And I would never expect it of my favorite songwriters, but I respect it when you do do that. You're very sweet, saying you know. I I watch these new music Fridays, man. You you know all the right things to say. Yeah, I love your band. You know that. I think you guys are the, one of the most interesting and weird bands ever. Thanks for saying that to us. 